Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 14th of June and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 17th of June. It's been a fairly um, indifferent week for equity markets. We still look as if we might finish the week in positive territory but upside has been tempered somewhat by concerns about China trade. It's also been tempered by concerns about rising geopolitical risk in the Arabian Gulf and the attack on the oil tankers in the Straits of Hormuz. But despite this, um, and a brief rebound in the oil price in the wake of those attacks, oil prices um, still look as if they're going to finish the week sharply lower. And you would have thought that a, ri a raising of the temperature in the Gulf would push oil prices up. But there is concern that um, global demand is likely to be much lower than expected. And as such, I think that appears to be dominating the price action more than any raising or political risk, despite the geopolitical risk, despite the fact that the US um, appears determined to be blaming Iran for the attack on those tankers. And given the fact that tension between the two is unlikely to be dialed down anytime soon, that is still likely to remain a key concern. But if we look at this oil price chart, we can see that unless we get back above this key resistance area here, or these highs here around about $65 a barrel, the direction of travel, notwithstanding any spikes higher, um, is likely to be towards the downside. And if we break below $60 a barrel, we could well see further losses. So the key levels on, on, on Brent crude, $65 on the upside, $60 on the downside, and see how we react around that. It's also been a bit strange um, with respect to further upside in stock markets is the rise in the gold price um, because in a risk on environment gold generally doesn't tend to go up and that's basically what we've seen in the past few days gold prices have gone very well bid on the back of a slightly weaker dollar but also I think rising perceptions that investors are starting to um, price a little bit for a much more turbulent next few weeks and months the key level I think on gold prices is a series of highs back in 2018 between 1370 or 1380 but I certainly think investors are now starting in or starting out to price in a much more risk-off scenario when it comes to their asset mix that's also borne out in Treasury prices and US Treasury yields US Treasury yields are back down towards the lows as investors start to price in the prospect of two to three Fed rate cuts this year and it's on that note that I think we can start to look forward to the um, next few days because one of the key um, items that I'll be paying particular attention to this upcoming week beginning the 17th of June is the Fed rate decision on the 19th of June and while the dollar has been strengthening um, pretty much across the board against the euro uh, against the pound and against the yen US Treasury yields do appear or bond markets in particular do appear to be pricing in the increasing prospect that we could see a rate cut not only in September and December but also one in July if we look at interest rate expectations for the July meeting they are pricing in a pretty much um, a US rate cut as a done deal an 88 percent probability well that for me I think still remains way too overpriced that being said that does appear to be where bond prices um, are taking us in terms of what to expect so this week's Fed meeting is going to be very very important in the overall picture and the direction of travel do Fed policymakers start to dial back market expectations of a Fed rate cut in July because let's face it just over six months ago Fed officials were talking about the prospect of at least two rate, Fed rate rises this year, even after the rise in rates we saw at the December meeting. So in the space of six months, market expectations have gone from plus two to minus three. And I think given the direction of travel for US data, that is a really distinct move from one side of the pendulum to the other. And I think the reality is probably somewhere in the middle even allowing for the week may payrolls report this is an incredible turnaround unemployment is still at multi-year lows 
while wages are growing at 3.1 percent a year um, and jobless claims um, albeit are at a five month you know five week high they are still at their lowest levels in 40 years so I think the big risk as we head towards the Fed rate decision this week is we could see Fed officials temper market expectations a rate cut in July or September will be tantamount to admitting they erred in December and while no one should be afraid to admit a mistake it could do more harm than good if the Fed were to rush into cutting rates so soon after raising them so we could see a significant repricing in the days ahead with respect to the Federal Reserve we've also got a Bank of England rate decision as well so in terms of the key levels on the pound against the dollar as um, the uh, pantomime of the Conservative Party leadership contest um, gets uh, underway that's going to be a, a key that's going to that could be a key um, determinant of where the pound moves with Boris Johnson um, taking making the early running in the Conservative Party uh, leadership contest there will be some TV debates on the 18th of June where basically he could blow up any chance that he has of becoming Conservative Party leader if he performs particularly badly in them but we also have a Bank of England rate decision um, coming up as well and we've heard increasingly loud noises from the Monetary Policy Committee Michael Saunders is warning about the prospect for higher rates as well as the chief economist warning about the prospect for higher rates quite simply markets don't believe that the Bank of England is serious about the prospect of another rate rise and to be quite honest neither do I I think it's um, wishful thinking on those two's part when you consider um, the GDP contraction that we saw in April yes wage growth is at 3.4 percent and that is very good but inflation is starting to edge higher um, so I think that could be part and parcel of why um, uh, policymakers are guiding towards the prospect of higher rates it's unlikely to happen before the Brexit deadline it's unlikely to happen also if the Federal Reserve decides that it wants to cut rates or starts to guide towards cutting rates and with the ECB also in dovish mode the Bank of England is not going to be hiking rates if the Fed is cutting and the ECB is cutting and for anyone to suggest otherwise I think it's um, I think it's unlikely to happen um, we've also got UK inflation data coming out on the 19th as well same day as the Fed Bank of England is on the 20th and we did see a modest uptick in April for CPI um, that saw an uptick to 2.1 percent uh, it's a six month high core prices however still remain uh, below the two percent level um, and the weaker pound and higher energy prices while not affecting core prices could push headline CPI up towards 2.2 but that's still well within the confines of error when it comes to the Bank of England's inflation target also keeping an eye on um, Germany and France flash PMIs but look just before I get on to them the key level on the cable is 127.50 on the upside if we break through there then we can go to 128.30 and on the downside obviously those support levels at 125.50 so moving on to the PMI numbers um, euro dollar still finding the uh, very air very thin above 113 um, it's unlikely that, that is we're going to get a significant move above the 200 day moving average thus far on the PMIs manufacturing activity has been abysmal particularly in Germany where readings are at multi-year lows services have been slightly better but not much so but even here it's looking softer than in recent months and with trade war concerns likely to continue to be a worry with the auto sector acting as a significant drag I think it's unlikely we're going to see a significant pickup going forward so 113 and a half on the upside around 112.20 on the downside and obviously the lows that we saw um, in April and May of 111 but I think the buyer still remains for a lower euro dollar also got the Bank of Japan rate decision again here likely to be dovish despite an improving Japanese economy uh, 0.6 expansion in Q1 still a lack of inflation um, which um, Governor Kuroda has suggested that um, will keep the bank on a very accommodative mode and he was a, was a pains to point out um, in recent comments that um, the Bank of Japan has still has significant options when it comes to easing policy further the main corporate story of the week away from all of the macro is Whitbread um, Whitbread share price has done fairly well over the course of the last few months um, the key question I think going forward is now Sean 
of its Costa coffee chain, it now has to stand or fall um, by the performance of its Premier Inn hotel brand. And here it's struggling a little bit. It still has the luxury of a good proportion of the proceeds of the £3.9 billion that it got from Coca-Cola. Um, it's returning some of that to its shareholders. But it was rather puzzling, I think, to hear um, Whitbread CEO Alison Britton give such a downbeat assessment of the outlook at the end of last year, at the end of the last fiscal year. At the end of Q4, we saw sentiment of business confidence slip back, revenue per room decline 4.4%. Now, that could just be merely a question of lowering the bar when it comes to Q1. I think with an awful lot more people um, choosing to stay at home, I think it's incumbent on Premier Inn to really start knocking it out of the park. Um, the company still remains on course to boost room capacity by another three to 4,000 rooms. I think the biggest concern is obviously its German unit, which continues to be a little bit of a drag. But revenues last year did show a rise of 2.1%, with underlying profit before tax rising to £438 million. So I think what we're looking for here is a continued rise in revenues and a continued rise in profits as more people choose to stay at home. Other things to keep an eye out for this week is the Slack IPO or direct listing that is due out on the 20th. Um, and that should be interesting from an IPO point of view, given the fact that sentiment is now starting to look a little bit weaker. And I might write a little something on the Slack direct listing uh, later in the week. So keep an eye out for that. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.